The art of the video game has primarily screenshots from 26 games that were in production around 2006 to 2008. Each game is briefly discussed and there are captions with the screenshots. Overall, it's one of the worst video game art books I've ever seen. Well, this review will cover the quality of the physical book itself, the content of the book, the aesthetics, and the nostalgia evoked by the book. I'll also look at whether it provides any insight into the development of the games. Let's start with the quality of the physical book. It's short and wide, 11 inches wide and 9 inches high. It has 160 pages, about 148 have art on them. It comes with a dust jacket that is a million times worse than the hardcover. The pages are a bit thicker and sturdier than the average art book. And as for the image quality, most are okay, but some look like they were blown up too big. Here it specifically mentions that the new PlayStation 3 allows for HD images, but then the image is all blurry. So overall, the quality of the physical book is about average. Okay, this next section is going to be organized differently than the usual reviews, because I feel the need to address something first. I'm going to be pretty harsh on this book, and I think you need some context to understand why I take the tone that I do. Does this book have what you want it to have? Okay, this is directly from the preface of the book. I'm here to make the argument that video games should be considered art. I believe that great video games can move and excite and inspire people, that they are every bit as worthy of our attention as great films, great paintings, great novels, and great symphonies. Oh, that's a lovely sentiment, and I obviously agree with it. Okay. It's 2008, and you're going to put together a book that makes the case that video games are art. What angle do you take? What do you put in it? Maybe Metal Gear Solid 2, with its themes that people can be controlled with enough subtle conditioning, and that you, the player, were controlled, even though you thought you were the one doing the controlling, just like the protagonist in the game? Surely video games are the ideal medium for conveying such a concept. Roger Ebert. Or perhaps you include the sheer joy to be found in simple multiplayer games like Mario Kart. Now, I'm not sure what angle you would take, but I honestly think you would have come up with something better than the author of this book did. The author attempts to make the case that video games are art by including screenshots from video games and commenting on them. Well, here's my opinion. I don't think the book came about because the author actually wanted to show that video games are art. Here's my best guess as to the true origins of this book. In 2008, the author worked for the LA Times. In the preface, he writes, When I glanced through the hundreds of images submitted to me by video game studios and publishers, and he also mentions, these images are mostly low-resolution printouts from my Canon inkjet. I think... He's a guy who likes video games, and because he worked for a news organization, he got sent promotional material from video game companies, and he literally just printed these pictures with a normal printer and published them in a book. If this is true, and I think it is, that's simply astounding to me. Okay, so what do we end up with? A bunch of random games that happen to send their promotional material to the LA Times of all places. Now, there are a few well-known games, like Killzone 2 and Call of Duty 4, but I had honestly never even heard of most of these games before looking at this book. Here's a few of the games included. How many of them have you played? <laughs> or even heard of? Universe at War, Earth Assault. Viking, Battle for Asgard. Warmonger, Operation Downtown Destruction. There are 26 games in this book, and I've played three of them. I submit that the games were selected not because the author thought through which games best illustrate games as art, but simply out of convenience. He simply chose images he already had in his possession and printed them up. Additionally, many of the developer quotes and the other writing is from interviews by other websites, so he didn't even get developer commentary from his own efforts. So ask yourself, does this book have what I want it to have? I honestly can't imagine anyone would answer yes to this question. If his objective is honestly to provide a thesis or argument 
for why video games are art, this is probably the weakest argument I've ever seen. His argument's actually closer to why CGI is art, or why games can be cinematic like movies, or the images in this book are as much art as other images. He describes the technical aspects of how a 3D model is produced more than why video games as a medium are artistic. Okay, moving on. What types of images are in the book? Well, like I said, there's a lot of screenshots from pre-release promotions. There are a few development images, and there's also a few other random things like showing someone with those motion capture things on their face. The book is organized alphabetically by game. Each game has a little blurb, often it's from a website interview, then there's screenshots with captions. Some games take a different approach, though. It seems kind of dependent on what images the author had available to him. Is there any writing or insight from the artists and developers themselves? Yeah, in fact, some entire entries are remarks from the developers. However, the tone of some of them is sort of sales pitchy. Well, actually, a lot of the book's this way, or else the author is extremely swept up in hyperbole. It's a bit of an odd tone for a book like this, and it's not really going to be relevant to anyone now or that's looking at this review. There are a couple of parts where the developers talk about how they actually went about designing things, which is great, like how they fixed a claustrophobic alley in Killzone 2. So in general, what's the quality of the writing? Well, at the start, there's a section on video game history, and it's all right. I like that he had little blurbs about the importance of visual designers at each point in time. The idea with this part is that you get a rough sense of the overall history of the industry, and you can also see how the visual designers were increasingly important. And that's about the only decent writing in the book. It seems to be written to video game skeptics, but I can't imagine this book is going to win them over. If anything, it's going to push them further away from acceptance. Well, anyway, overall, I just really don't like the writing. It is just so over the top. It sounds like the writer literally right-clicked words and switched them out with a thesaurus tool because some of the word choices are very unnatural. A lot of the writing is alright, but so much of it is forced and overbearing. Here's a simple example of what I mean. In the preface, he writes, Each image in this book has a voice as certain and powerful as a kick to the skull. Really? Wait, that one's actually pretty cool. But it's still not a kick to the skull. Well, as I said, a lot of the writing feels weirdly forced. And since this is so much of the book, allow me to give several examples. The smoke-charred glass of a cockpit lends verisimilitude to this first-person perspective. We get it, you're smart. But what's the point of using words no one understands? Although the in-game weapons are impressive to behold, their destructive prowess is utterly breathtaking. Character design was emphasized during the game's development, and the result is a cast of villainy that is conspicuously malevolent as well as utterly unique. Okay, what is that even saying? That the villains were designed? That's it? How were they designed? Why were they designed that way? We have no idea. We're just given obvious statements in a flowery way. And a lot of the captions read like he literally just looked at the image and is writing something about it without really even having anything meaningful to say. For example, look at these. Though often cast in a weak, pallid glow, the game's protagonists are expertly rendered down to the last sinew. I'm guessing he glanced at that photo, saw the muscles, and made that remark. Part of the thrill of Blackside is the way marauding grotesqueries are interposed with familiar elements of everyday life, like this sinister fellow in a common 18-wheeler truck. <laughs> Come on, man. Here's another caption just brimming with insight. Long-distance attacks also play an important in-game role. But, near or far, the resultant pyrotechnics appear startlingly real. Okay, I'm guessing he looked at that photo, saw an explosion, and <laughs> that's what he came up with. 
This next one's probably my favorite. Squad-based combat is an important aspect of most modern war games. Activision and Infinity Ward have taken the concept further, however, crafting vividly realized fellow soldiers with independent personalities and unique appearances. Well, in the screenshot, not only are none of the soldiers' faces even visible, but these unique soldiers are literally labeled Call of Duty 4 Soldier. <laughs> you know what? Let's keep going. Here are some more captions. Hellboy, Science of Evil, is all about atmosphere. Gothic religious iconography serves to contrast and underscore the game's thematic material. Sonic's universe is a rich tapestry of diverse environments, from verdant grasslands to barren cityscapes. <laughs> Thanks for the insight. These captions are literally the exact same, even though they're on two different pages. Here he says he's not sure what to look at. <laughs> Basically a pointless caption. If you compare the writing in this book to, say, an illustrated history of 151 video games, it's almost embarrassing. Well, in case you can't tell, I think the content of this book is poor. It sucks. On to the aesthetics. It's a wide book, which I think suits video game art books very well since a lot of the images produced are on a wider paper, especially screenshots, which is mostly what this book has. And while I wouldn't give it bonus points for being aesthetically pleasing, I think it is at least consistent and it's easy to look through, but I will say some of the blurrier images are just not nice to look at. Are there any full pages of art? Yeah, there are some. Most of the images are screenshots, and most of them haven't aged very well. Is there anything else about the book, like the cover, etc.? Well, the actual hardcover is fine, but the dust jacket design is just bad. It's just a conglomeration of unrelated images and boxes. And that frog in the top left is just dumb. I'm sorry. I had this book sitting on my desk for weeks, and that frog is just the stupidest thing in the whole world. Are there any other weird issues with the book? Well, I don't know where else to put this in the review, but honestly, I think the title of the book is just dumb. I mean, would you call a similar book The Art of the Movie or The Art of the Musical? Probably not. Well, all things considered, I think the aesthetics of the book are below average. As for the nostalgia, as I mentioned, I haven't played most of the games in this book. I doubt the average reader has either. And for the games I have played, I didn't really feel nostalgic. It felt a bit distant and cold to me. Like highlighting a random alley in Killzone 2? I mean, that's not going to ignite nostalgia. Alright, does this book offer any backstage info on the games? There are some parts of the book that do, like when it describes how the hunter from Half-Life was developed, or how certain aspects of turning an image into a 3D render was discussed. Generally, though, the development discussion was a bit shallow, and it's generally from a technical perspective rather than an artistic one. Like here, the book discusses how some artists use a program that lets them paint in layers, so they can try out a lot of different looks with the same skeleton. Well, unfortunately, the images in the book don't really show that. Well, a few remarks in closing. This is one of the highest rated video game art books on Amazon, and I've even seen it in brick and mortar bookstores. I am honestly perplexed at how it is so highly regarded. You can buy this book used for about $7. That's still not worth it. This book is worthless. If someone gives you this book, as a present, you should be suspicious of them. In the acknowledgement section, the author jokes that he thought his editor might die from adjective poisoning. Well, I just about did. Well, different people want different things in video game art books, but I hope this review has been helpful in showing you what you can expect from this book. Perhaps you're looking for a book about random games from 2006 to 2008. If you have any complaints about this video, please feel free to contact my customer support center. My employees are at the phones ready to take your call and they are waiting with bated breath. 
their breath is baited. Your face, oh my gosh.